Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at the most recent price action and what I think is likely to happen next. As we get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, smash the like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, why not check it out guys, linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7 and it's completely free and it's the first place that we go to to notify you of everything that's going on in the crypto space. So why not keep a finger on the pulse of crypto by joining us down in the Discord server. Okay, guys, let's waste no more time. Let's jump right down into this one. Okay, we will be taking a look at two things. We'll be taking a look at smart money concepts and we'll be taking a look at Elliott Wave Theory. Uh, we'll be taking a look at these on the hourly charts and we'll be using Binance as our data source with USDT being the pair. Okay. We'll start things off with the smart money concepts and then we will take a look at the Elliott Way theory afterwards. So here on this hourly chart, we can see that smart money concepts has plotted a few different things of interest for us. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we're just going to zoom out just a fraction here because there are some bullish things happening on the slightly larger time frames, but on these smaller ones, we're not yet done, in my opinion. So as I zoom out of here, we can see that we had a bearish change of character just up here. This was on the 17th of April uh, 2023. We then got a confirmation of this down here. Uh, this happened on the 24th of April. We then got another break of structure up here, confirming that we're still bearish on the 1st of May. And another one just over here. Uh, we close this one on the 8th of May. Okay, so all th four of these are basically saying, look, this hourly chart has a bearish structure to it. Okay, now as we kind of come down to where we are at the moment, it's not unusual for us to break our structure and then kind of move up and retrace above it. This is pretty common stuff. You see this reasonably uh, quite often. Now we can see here that we did rally up quite a bit and then we started to push back down again. Okay, and uh, yesterday we also saw another surge as well. So let's go into this, right? Because we'll talk about the Elliott Wave Theory stuff in a second because they're interesting structures that are going on from an Elliott Wave Theory point of view. In the same way as we see here, with our um, one hour chart as well. So it's really faint and it's really hard to see, but right here on this 200 EMA, specifically when we broke above that 200 EMA, it has a micro change of character. Okay, so all of this area just here was in a bearish state of play. And what I circled just here on this 200 EMA has now changed that into a slightly more bullish state of play. This means that we might actually have to come up and test this high again at some point. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, from our smart money concepts, we can see that this is a strong high, which basically tells us that we're not likely to break that high there and that we're just going to get rejected. We can also see this is a red internal sell order block as well. So there's a lot of selling pressure right here, dragging that price down. So although the bulls are thinking, look, we can just rally above this area, we've got our change of character here there's a, a probability that that may not be the case. It'll be interesting to kind of see how that plays out and whether or not we are going to get smacked all the way back down towards equilibrium, which is where the buyers are right now. Okay, so right where we are, there is an insufficient amount of buying pressure. Um, it'll be interesting to kind of see how that plays out. With that being said, there's also very insufficient selling pressure here. And this is notable from our stochastic RSI that has corrected from overbought to oversold on this hourly chart reasonably quickly. This means that it's likely that we're going to revisit this range up here. And of course, according to Smart Money Concepts, not likely to break that high right up here. Uh, and for record, that high is set in there at 27,663. Now, I think there's a probability here that that may not actually be the case. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see whether or not this holds as our resistance or not, um, because looking at the momentum behind the price action, the fact that people are not willing to sell here might mean that there's some balls are going to get some strength and actually take it up and maybe break that high there. If it does this, then we are probably going to end up changing our hourly um, structure into a bullish one. OK, so as in we had all these bearish plays right here, and um, it's possible that if we break up above this range here, that this becomes a bullish change of character on our one hour chart. And um, so that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on and keep an eye out for. You can see that we almost filled our fair value gap down here and we just narrowly missed it. Now it's still technically there um, and because it hasn't been fully filled out, 
You've already tapped into it twice. So this is an area of significance when it comes to buying pressure. Okay, and this is 26,500 to 26,637. Um, so at some point, I think we're going to have to come back down here, but we can see how this coincides with our green areas here of buying pressure as well. Um, so keeping a close eye on that, it's still technically valid as a fair value gap as it hasn't completely been filled out. Um, so a revisiting this range is also going to be interesting. Now, the other thing that's worth noting here with this particular range is that we've tapped into it once and we tapped into it twice. At some point, we're going to chew through all of those buy orders that are in that range, specifically if we come down three or four more times uh, and we actually go and just work our way through filling out all of those orders until the selling pressure is too much for the buyers. And then we lose this area. If we lose this area as our support level or our demand area, then it's soon going to turn into a bit of a supply area and become resistance. So one to keep an eye on. Uh, I think it's going to be an important place for us in the future. Um, so yeah, from Smart Money Concepts point of view, a few things to be watching out for. Are we going to break higher than the swing high uh, that we had set? And are we, or are we actually going to break down more towards equilibrium, which is currently set at 26,690 to 26,780? Um, that'll be interesting. Our fair value gap is also there. And at the moment, it just show us with a weak low. So we're still looking to break that down even deeper. Let's go on and jump on over into our Elliott Way Theory side of things. Yesterday, we were talking about the potential moves up upwards. We hit these, but we actually moved down lower before we actually rallied up, which was quite an interesting play. A little bit unexpected, but I was away from the, the computer yesterday. I was, uh, yeah, as Chris would say, I was on a day off, um, but I wasn't around much yesterday. So I closed my short position. I think it was around this area here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it was around this area, um, around 10 or 11 a.m. Um, BST. Uh, we obviously pushed down a little bit lower, so I kind of closed out a little bit soon. But, you know, we did move up into our range that we're kind of talking about, even though... Uh, I wasn't expecting that move to the downside first. So we came right back up into our range. This isn't anything unusual, um, and it does kind of lead me into thinking that this is going to be an ending diagonal structure if we're to complete the fifth wave movement. And what is an ending diagonal structure? Well, an ending diagonal structure is made up of three waves down followed by three waves up. Now, this is where it gets tricky because I think we're going to have to come down to come back up and do some kind of double top. We cannot push on an ending diagonal. We cannot push higher than 27,663. Uh, so if that happens, then we break that structure on Elliott Way theory kind of idea. So we would move up. Uh, it's possible that we've already done this within here. I just don't think that's the case. We'll see how it plays out. Um, and then, of course, we come down in another three wave movement. Now, that three wave movement does have to hit our 1.618. Uh, so that has to come down a little bit deeper. And then we have to have another three wave structure going up and this one can overlap with wave one um, and that's not a problem and then we finish that off with a final three wave structure all in all that ending diagonal pattern would be a wave one wave two wave three wave four and wave five okay it's a five wave structure that doesn't contain any five wave structures it would only contain three wave structures and there um the rules around impulsive structures do not count so your wave four can in fact and should more than likely cross the wave one positioning um, and then wave five uh, to come down in a three-way structure you'll find is with ending diagonals like this sometimes they truncate meaning that they don't hit their full potential of what you'd expect of a final fifth wave movement from a zoomed out point of view um, and so we're still looking at the moment of coming down towards 24,791 to 25,418 okay so an ending diagonal is the structure that I'm currently thinking is going on right inside there. And the alternative, of course, is that we haven't completed this wave four and we're still within the wave four structure. And what I mean by that is if we go ahead and take a look at this as a giant A, B, C, we'd have an A, B, potential C coming up higher. In that case, we can go up higher than 27,663. We just haven't started our fifth wave movement to the downside. The higher that our fourth wave goes the lower that our fifth wave must go. So it's not the most awful thing in the world for Bitcoin's price to actually push up towards our range here, okay, at 27,765 to 28,060, because that would actually make it a little bit easier to hit the slightly lower range that we're looking for 
on our 1.618 target ranges, uh, specifically on the macro view. But I'll talk more about that uh, this afternoon. Now, I know that Elliott Wave Theory can be a little bit more of a complex subject than smart money concepts or some other analytical approaches to the to the market. However, I think that if you do apply Elliott Wave Theory correctly and the rules are applied as they were written, then you actually end up in a very accurate predictive tool uh, in your arsenal. Now, because it's a very complex subject, I did put together a course material on this. It's down at cheekyschool.com, linked in the description below. Um, it is a pretty hefty course with a lot of different sections to it. Um, and it's not so hard to understand what Elliott Wave Theory is. It's much harder to actually apply. So lots of practice needed if you're interested in kind of learning Elliott Wave Theory. And, you know, I think it'd be good for most people to have a good general understanding of it, even if you're just going through practicing how to draw it uh, on the charts, because at least then you'll be able to follow along in the video uh, videos that I put out here on the YouTube channel. I'm going to leave the video right there though guys. If you have found it useful and informative, smash the like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe. Tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so you will be able to be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And uh, with all that said, done out of the way guys, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one. We are not financial advisors, and none of what we have communicated early or in a writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers, and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to risk your entire investment. This video is an information and entertainment advice only. All our videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice. There are multiple strategies, and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.